LA Grand Prix going down this weekend in Los Angeles, California on the campus of UCLA, Drake Stadium. Now, this has been billed as one of the top competitions for some of the top USA athletes for the year so far. One of the big controversies was Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni. Now, she unfortunately pulled out of the meet just about last week. It was announced that I think Bobby Kersey noted she had a little bit of a hamstring or scare or something like that. And just out of precautions, she's not gonna be running. Now, it's pretty unfortunate as Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni is obviously probably the biggest name in the sport right now, right? You have names like Noah Lyles, you have Gabby Thomas, Abby Siner, et cetera, et cetera. But Sydney McLaughlin is one of those names and maybe the top name, right? It's unfortunate because we're having one of the biggest meets on USA soil. She was going to be competing here in an event where her and Bobby Kersey have been talking about the world record, and now she unfortunately pulled out. Now, I see it on two sides. One, I'm disappointed. I wanna see the top athletes competing, whether it's week after week or every other week, but I wanna see them competing on the track so we can see where they're at, so we can see some good competition, so we can see some good times and all that. But on the flip side, I can't help but understand that an athlete's goal is the world championships. An athlete's goal is the Olympic Games. So if she's gonna pull out from a season opener, from a meet that you know is just you know a little short-term thing to prepare her for the Worlds, I can't hate on that, right? But regardless, she's gonna be going to the Paris Diamond League. She's gonna be competing in the 400 meters there. So we're gonna see what's gonna be going down. Stay tuned for another video. I'll talk more in depth about my thoughts on, you know, athletes pulling out of races and head-to-head -head competition and all that stuff. But let's talk about what is actually going down at this meet. We have the women's 100 meter dash that is arguably going to be the top 100 meter dash race that we've seen all year. We're talking about Shakira Richardson. We're talking about Aliyah Hobbs. We're talking about Marizo Zetalu. These three women alone should be enough for you to want to watch this meet. Shakira Richardson has been tearing up the track already, getting wins over Sharika Jackson, running 10.76 seconds for a world lead, running a windy 10.5, you know, seven seconds, right? Getting wins in the 200. She has been very, very consistent. And I think everyone is looking to see what she's gonna be able to do against some of these other ladies. Like I noted, she already beat Sharika Jackson, but what about Marie Jose Talou? Now, Talu, 2017 World Championship silver medalist in the 100 and 200, 2019 bronze medalist in the 100. This year, she has already run 10.78 seconds, her second fastest time of her entire career, number two on the world list, only behind Shakira Richardson, proving to the world that she is no slouch and she is not going anywhere. Talu has a personal best of 10.72. She's actually equal with Shakira Richardson on that all-time list. She is gonna be a force to be reckoned with considering what she just did a couple weeks ago but we also have Aaliyah Hobbs. Now, I've been of the opinion that Aaliyah Hobbs has been the top USA sprinter for the past two years or so in the 100 meter dash, right? She had the highest finish of USA sprinter at world championships last year, and she's been clicking off multiple 10.8 second runs year after year. She is undefeated this year, just like Shakira Richardson, but against a lot of the USA competition. So we're gonna see this race between Shakira and Aaliyah Hobbs and see who's the real top USA sprinter right now. If Shakira Richardson beats her, of course she's number one. If Aaliyah Hobbs beats her, of course she's number one. Now, let's put it like this though. Shakira Richardson definitely has a much higher ceiling when we're talking about the 100 meter dash. 10.72 personal best, 10.57 windy. So Aaliyah Hobbs, I think has some catching up to do when it, we're talking about the times, but I think Aaliyah Hobbs is the most consistent 100 meter sprinter in the United States right now. This is gonna be a great race to really see what happens and what goes down. Also in the race, TT Terry, misses consistent as well. Made the USA team last year. She's been winning races, so never sleep on TT Terry. Also, Tiana Daniels, Melissa Jefferson, Camber Sturgis, Brianna Williams from Jamaica, right? People have been kind of sleeping on uh, Brianna Williams because, you know, there's a lot of Jamaican women who have been coming up. She's in this race. Morlake Kinnison has run sub 11 this year already. So this is a very, very stacked women's 100 meter field. Now, let's jump up to the women's 200 where we have Gabby Thomas in a very high quality race going up against Jenna Prandini, Tamara Clark, Brittany Brown, and Tyena Gaither. Probably a couple other names, but these are the ones on the list right now. Now, Gabby Thomas, of course, Olympic bronze medalist from 2021, 21.61 personal best from 2021 as well. She's already opened up her season running the 400 and the 200 a couple times, 400 meter personal best of 49.6. That's really gonna translate to the 200. I spoke to her at the Atlanta City Games where she finished third place in the 150, but she said she hasn't even started doing speed work yet. So once she starts getting that speed work going, I think she's going to be a serious force in the 200. I think everyone is you know, predicting Sharika Jackson to get that gold medal again, to potentially challenge that world record. But I think Gabby Thomas, considering she got injured last year, she is going to be a force in the 200 and might be able to challenge Sharika Jackson. Not saying she's gonna get gold, just saying she's going to be able to challenge. So keep a lookout for Gabby Thomas. 
Also, Jenna Prandini, she is a warrior, has made so many USA teams in the 200. She's always gonna put up a fight. Tamara Clark, I think she's dealing with some injuries lately, hasn't opened up her season yet. Gonna see what she does. And of course, we can never forget about Brittany Brown, 2019 World Championship silver medalist in the 200. She is always a force here. Tiny Gaither from Bahamas, trains with Gabby Thomas, trains with Tamara Clark, trains with Anivia Battle, all of them under Tanji Bufer Bailey. This is gonna be a great 200 meter dash. Now, let's talk about the men's 100 now. This is another great race. We just saw Christian Coleman down in Bermuda, just edged out Noah Lyles running 9.78 seconds. A little bit windy, of course, but Christian Coleman inserting himself back in the conversation as a gold medal threat. Now, Fred Curley is probably the gold medal favorite right now still. He's been super consistent, but Christian Coleman in this race, he is the guy that we wanna look out for to see if he remains consistent. I think he's on the path to another medal at the World Championships, right? Still has to make the USA team and still a lot of competition, but he's really setting himself up well for the 2023 season, but he's gonna have some good competition here. We're looking at Aaron Brown from Canada, always, always consistent. We're looking at Elijah Hall, finished fourth place at USA's last year, ran the, I think it was the third leg on the World Championship four by one last year as well. We're looking at uh, someone like Ronnie Baker, Ronnie Baker has had a resurgence in 2023. Dealt with some injuries the past couple years as well as during indoors, but came back at the Miramar Invitational, ran a very good race there, ran a pretty good, you know, decent 100 meters at the Atlanta City Games, a little bit, you know, below probably what he expected, but I'm looking to see what he does here. Ronnie Baker could win this race and he could really throw down a very great time. So look out for all these guys in this 100 meters. Moving over, men's 200, another high quality field. Kenny Benarek is going up against guys like Dream Richards, Kyrie King, Josephus Lyles, Jerome Blake, right? Alex Ogando. This is a stacked field, but I'm looking at Kenny Benarek versus Jareem Richards. Kenny B just finished second place to Fred Curley a couple weeks ago um, out in Doha at the Dumbo Hot Diamond League, right? Of course, Kenny B, two-time silver medalist at the Olympics and World Championships, but Jareem Richards, he is always a guy who is in the mix. You know, finished, I think it was fifth place at the World Championships last year. I might be getting that wrong, um, but he finished third place at the World Championships in 2017. 2022, got the World Indoor Championship gold medal in the 400. These guys are gonna be going head to head and I'm really excited to see. And I, of course, Jareem Richards, he got first place in the 150 meter dash uh, in the B race, but still a very strong time that he did run uh, at the Atlanta City game. So very strong field, never, never sleep on Alex Ogando, did very well at the World Championships last year, and I'm looking to see what he does in this race as well. So very strong field in that men's 200. Going over to the 400, another controversial situation. Michael Norman, unfortunately dealing with a little bit of a knee injury, so had to pull out of this race as well. Won't be competing, but we still have some great names in here. Unfortunately, the whole start list is not out, but Karani James, he's on this list, and Karani James is Mr. Consistent. 2011 World Championships in Daegu, his first World Championship gold medal, and then he managed to win in 2022, got the silver medal at the World Championship. So three-time Olympic medalist, Karani James is never a guy to sleep on, and he's always gonna be ready when it counts. Only other on the list is Alonzo Russell from the Bahamas, who's had a really good start to his season as well, so we're gonna see who else is in this men's 400. Over to the men's 400 meter hurdles now, another stacked field. We're looking mainly at Rye Benjamin, of course. He is the guy right now. He's been super consistent. He's been running 47s multiple times. I think went out to Doha at Mount Sac, right? A couple different races that he He's run 47 seconds this year already. We don't know the status of Warholm. He's, you know, had a good indoor season, probably coming back. Allison Dos Santos, he's unfortunately sitting out, I think, due to injury. So Rye Benjamin right now is probably the 400 meter hurdle favorite, but there's a lot of Americans who are right in the mix and they're gonna be right in this race. We're talking about Khalifa Rosser, right? Made the USA team 47 seconds for a personal best. Finished, I think it was fifth or sixth place at the World Championships last year. We're also talking about Trevor Bassett, bronze medalist at the World Championships last year, 47.3 personal best, right? We're also talking about CJ Allen. He actually pushed Rye Benjamin to the line at the Doha Diamond League, and he got a personal best of 47.9. So this is a very stacked field right here in Los Angeles for this 400 meter hurdles. Kyron McMaster, how could I forget him? He got, I think it was fourth place at the Olympic Games running 47.0, right? This guy is a very, very serious threat. I think McMaster has a lot of potential and he kind of got lost in the fray, you know, with the Samba, Warholm, uh, Benjamin and Dos Santos talk, but look out for Kyron McMaster. He actually 
actually could win this whole race and you know no one would see it coming but great great field here that i'm looking forward to in the men's 400 meter hurdles but we also have the women's 100 meter hurdles that is just as stacked toby amisan the world record holder the world gold medalist right from 2022 at the world championships last year she's coming in here and going up against jasmine camacho quinn now of course toby amisan has that world record at 12.12 .12 seconds also has the windy best of 12.06 seconds so she has a top two performances all conditions in history but just a couple days ago in Bermuda, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, she actually ran 12.17 seconds, which is the third fastest all conditions time ever. Now it was windy, so didn't count, but Jasmine Camacho Quinn is no one to sleep on. Olympic champion, of course she got bronze at the world championships last year, but she's really been getting more consistent race after race and you know, if we're not careful, she could not only win this race, but then go on to win world championships this year as well. This is going to be a great competition between them. Of course, we have the previous world record holder, Kenny Harrison. She is in this race. Tia Jones, she is in this race. Tia Jones just had an amazing race at the Atlanta City Games where she actually beat out Kenny Harrison in those 100 meter hurdles. So Tia Jones always on the rise and one to look out for. Mia Ali, 2019 world champion. Alicia Johnson made the world championship team last year. You know, unfortunately crashed out in the heats, but she is always one who's gonna be in the mix. Tania Marshall, Gabby Cunningham, right? This is a very, very stacked 100 meter hurdles field. And this is what I'm talking about. I love seeing the top women go head to head week after week, always in the mix, never scared of each other. This is gonna be a great race for the women in the 100 meter hurdles. Now, finally in the sprints, women's 400 meter dash. We're talking about Marlita Polino. She's the silver medalist from the Tokyo Olympics and the world championships last year behind Shauna Miller-Webo. Miller-Webo just gave birth to her child, so she's taking the year off. Polino is probably the 400 meter favorite when we're talking about going into the world championships this year. Still have to see what McLaughlin Lavroni is gonna do, what Femke Bowles is gonna do, what Britton Wilson is gonna do. Regardless, Polino is the favorite at this moment and Sawi Nasser, she also entered the fold as well, but we're gonna see what uh, all these ladies do. But we have a good field around here, right? Uh, Cofield, also from Dominican Republic. She had a really good 2022 season. She's on the come up as well. Lena Irby, always consistent, always in the game. Kendall Ellis, one of the most consistent USA 400 meter runners, you know, over the past couple of years, since about 2019, I think, when she made her first world championship team. Might've been 2017, if I'm uh, remembering correctly, but also Stacey Ann Williams from Jamaica. Now this 400 is very, very good. I'm looking to see what Marlita Polino does in this 400 to really potentially separate herself from the rest the ladies in the field all right so those are just the sprints and the hurdles that are going to be going down in la we're of course going to be at the meet getting some interviews getting some coverage so go in the comments below let me know what you're looking forward to at this la grand prix and let me know what you think about the you know small controversy of Sydney mclaughlin lavroni pulling out a thing mo pulling out bobby christie all that stuff right go in the comments below and let me know make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel back again next time thanks for watching